Thank you very much, uh, everyone that will listen to uh, this um, FAPSE Dialogue, the fifth edition of the FAPSE Dialogues, uh, which are a series of dialogues between our federation, the Federation of Catholic Family Associations in Europe, and uh, different national ministers of either uh, family, labor, or social affairs. Um, so the, the goal of those FAFSA dialogues is to first uh, raise awareness on the demographic challenges in the EU and to secondly highlight uh, the good practices at the national level when it comes to family policies, social policies to reverse those demographic uh, unbalances in Europe. So as I just mentioned, it's the fifth edition. So we were very happy to welcome um, the Vice President of the European Commission, Dubravka Schwitza, in charge of democracy and demography. We welcomed as well uh, Italian Minister uh, for Equal Opportunities and Family, Elena Bonetti. We welcome uh, as well um, Hungarian Minister for Families, Katalin Novak, and Slovenian Minister for um, labor, family, and social affairs, uh, Janes Sigler Krai. And finally, we are very happy today to welcome Minister uh, Milan Krajniak. I'm sorry if I butcher your last name, uh, Minister for um, Family, for, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, for Labor, Social Affairs, and Family of the Slovak Republic. Thank you very much for uh, joining us today. And we, of course, welcome our President Vincenzo Bassi that will lead the, the dialogue um, today. So, and I will uh, just before I give the floor to our president to for some introductory remarks and the first questions, um, then we will have the answer uh, of Minister Krajniak to different questions. When it comes to the, the, the situation in Slovakia and the, the work of uh, the Slovak Republic when it comes to uh, tackling the demo demographic challenges in the EU. So, um, uh, President Winter, Vincenzo Vassi, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Benedict. Thank you to the Minister. Uh, we know, we appreciated your uh, availability because we know very much how engaged you are in managing all uh, the affairs uh, uh, concerning uh, the, 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 the war in Ukraine. So there are problems with the refugees and the the fact that you are with us, uh, well, thank you very much indeed. It's something that uh, we appreciate very much and I hope that we can also uh, make this uh, webinar fruitful for your uh, country, but also for as an example for uh, um, our communities and uh, our European uh, families. So thank you very much indeed. Just uh, uh, to start with our discussion, um, I would like uh, to stress uh, uh, to point out uh, our uh, uh, experience uh, as uh, FAPSE. Uh, together with uh, COMESE, we gave our contribution on the European Commission Green Paper on Aging with a reflection paper on the elderly and the future of Europe. And we underlined the necessity for intergenerational fairness for the, Euro for the future of Europe, which is uh, the position of the Slovak government, uh, how to propose concrete solutions uh, uh, good uh, for all European families, which often have to take care both of their children and uh, for their elderly people. How to guarantee real uh, fairness. I think we will continue to speak about the economic function that the families uh, meet in uh, Europe. And I'd like to mention one example that I, as a minister, uh, in Slovakia try to introduce into our system. It, it relates to the fact that working children can contribute from the taxes uh, 
to their elderly because I understand creation, this uh, intergenerational uh, justice as uh, very important, and it has this uh, form of Bismarck's uh, pay a new go system has to be somehow broken uh, down because that put uh, the generations apart. People are somehow dependent on the state to take care of them. And the link was lost because if I bring up one, two, three children, then I help somebody in future to get the, the pensions uh, from the system. So we try to put in our pension system the, the situation then without increasing the contributions and the taxes, each working person may decide, and the proposal is to put 1.5% from the gross wage to his her mother and 1.5% to his her father. We want to teach society that money uh, which are then delivered to pensioners very much depend on the number of children that are born in Slovakia and that create these economic funds. We're very mm. pleased that also Czech Republic has been inspired by this uh, concept and has introduced it already in its policy statement. For me, this is the top priority for this year because I try to uh, make the public understand that we are dependent on on it, not only from the economic point of view, not only human, that we are dependent on whether families decide to have children, as that is only based not only whether people love children and care for children, but it's also an economic factor. In Slovakia, we've calculated that to bring up the child up to 20 years of age costs Slovak family 50 to 70,000 euro. But the mothers that brought up these children at often at the expense of their uh, economic uh, working development, they have lowest pensions. If, for example, a mother will be retired uh, in 2023, the lady who had no children has higher pension than the mother that has three children. So that is why we want these working children pay part of their gross wages to their parents. So we want to kind of mitigate this injustice created uh, in the years past. <laughs> really, thank you very much. Uh, for me, it's like music uh, to hear uh, some uh, uh, policy, and uh, and uh, it's very interesting because uh, you, you, in this way, we realize what we were uh, talking, uh, we were saying uh, for uh, a long time that uh, family policies may be considered as an investment and not uh, as a cost, and that the uh, public policy, economic public policies must be linked uh, to family policies, uh, and also the taxation uh, has to be imposed on the basis of, also of the uh, family's uh, responsibilities. So thank you very much, because uh, now the reality is becoming stronger and also through your example than, uh, than the ideology. So thank you very much. And in fact, uh, what we have what what we have seen during this uh, uh, this pandemic time uh, that uh, uh, the pandemic has exacerbated the weight of family care responsibilities. But these responsibilities are also a moment of real gratitude towards the elderly and a, a priceless joy for uh, uh, the parents. 
recently published data in France show that uh, the desired fertility rate for families is 2.39, while the real fertility rate has dropped down per the six consecutive years, uh, this year arriving at less than 1.87. We are talking about France. Could you say one word on motherhood, also in terms uh, of freedom for women to become new mothers? Because, uh, you know, in the past we were talking about uh, the freedom of of not uh, of uh, of not generating children, but now also the French data uh, put the evidence of the contrary. The, the people want to to generate children, but uh, their desire is not uh, realized. So it could be also very useful uh, to to put this question: uh, the motherhood. Uh, must be interpreted in terms of freedom for women to become your mothers. Mr. President, uh, you opened uh, a question that is uh, for survival of our civilization based on Western Christianity, Christianity fundamental. Because if the civilization loses uh, the effort to, to recreate, to develop, well, that's very bad. And the basis of this um, um, development are children. And this is what we are losing in the entire Europe. Well, how to react to that? Our principled position is as follows. Slovakia wants each and every young woman to choose uh, and uh, create a certainty that we will support such a mother and family irrespective whether after the birth of the child, they decide to go to labor market as soon as possible. So we have a program where we support uh, via creches, maternity schools, primary schools, and so on, these kind of families, which is partially French and German route, but also we give the mother an opportunity to stay as long as possible at home with the children. So each mother can choose the until three years of age, we support the mother uh, three, uh, approximately 380 euros so that this mother may stay at home. That is given through the longest period in Europe. If the mother, however, wants to return back to job, the state supports her. If she wants as long as possible at home, the state supports this mother. This is the only way how we may show the young families that if they decide to have children, we support them. But I'd like to uh, return to the, the figures you mentioned. When you mentioned the figure 1.87, well, I mean the experience in the entire Europe show that none of the pro-family, pro-population measure works uh, from the point of media term horizon. Well, it creates for a while an interest and, and increases the uh, natality curve, but in a while it gets back to the former development. So if we want to reverse the demographic trend, we have to change the thinking on people. And that can be done only via long-term effort that the state, whether Slovakia, Italy, Sweden, over long term, each year, will show families that the state wants them in their decision to start families and have children. This must be the climate in Europe. Currently, 
the European climate does, is not very favorable for this decision to have children. How many women in Western Europe, uh, they think it's better not to have children because they worsen the climate uh, crisis. In China, Africa, India, mothers don't uh, think of such dilemmas. So if we don't change our thinking, we probably won't change the situation. Yes, uh, thank you. I agree. I definitely agree with you. Um, and uh, you switch uh, 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 the dialogue on uh, uh, to the European level. And so uh, keeping in mind that family policies are within the competence of the member states, how could uh, we best develop the sharing of best practices at uh, European level? Do you imagine that uh, we can also organize uh, intergovernmental alliance uh, uh, among countries uh, much more uh, sensible to uh, demographic uh, issue? Certainly, yes. Uh, since I took the job of the Minister of uh, uh, Work, Social Affairs and Family, I very closely speak with my partners in V4, with my Czech colleague, Hungarian uh, Lady Minister, and, um, uh, and the so the Polish uh, lady minister and the partner in Hungary. We have very good cooperation with our Slovenian uh, minister, who was the last in your debate. And we try to compare these good practices in our countries, but also see, speak about those things which don't function. None of those measures taken in Hungary, Slovakia, Czech Republic uh, worked long term. It worked short term. It showed it cannot be kind of panacea. It seems to me that it would be much better to do little changes continuously to support families and families with children each year because um, the previous measure, well, that was one big change, one big subsidy support, but then nothing. So this uh, gradual, continual support, I think, is much better than only one-off measure. As an example, uh, last week we announced significant change in pro-family policy in Slovakia. Since 1st January next year, we are increasing tax bonus for each child from 65% uh, from 45 euro per child to 100 euro. We are also increasing uh, percentage of uh, uh, child allowances. Um, and thus, we are significantly changing the support for children. But I personally don't think that this, this will change the thinking of families uh, forever. I understand it only as a gradual preparation for other measures to show the families that, well, the state is here to support it, to support you when you decide to create children. Thank you, Minister. I want just to, to, to if, if it is possible, to do uh, one consideration, first, uh, two considerations. First one, uh, uh, I think that uh, it's important also to, to invite other countries uh, 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 to speak about demography issues, not only uh, your four countries. I mean, it's an, a good an example, but as it is good, we have to invite more people. So it could be a good practice also to share uh, uh, opinions on and demographic issues. On the other side, it is very important that Europe can uh, understand 
what we said, what you say, that uh, these kind of policies are not cost but are investment. That's why it's important to, to enlarge uh, this group of countries. Other issue regards uh, the family and uh, the fact that the, most of the time the families are, are they, they decide not to generate because they feel lonely. The, the loneliness uh, we saw also during the pandemic time, the loneliness is uh, the worst sickness of the families. That's why I think uh, the civil society could be a good uh, uh, instrument, could play a good role in order to solve uh, and to care uh, the loneliness uh, uh, of uh, the family. Do you think that uh, the, even the family associations uh, can uh, help the communities uh, and uh, also the role of, uh, of your governments, of European uh, governments, uh, in trying to revert this uh, demographic uh, winter? Well, I will speak on both issues you've spoken about. Firstly, I am uh, very thankful to your federation's activity at the European level, because we need this uh, kind of alliance uh, uh, where we can speak about these uh, questions and issues and to find where in which country they have this best experience so that we can share it but not to invent the wheel again and also to uh, inform that the topic we speak about is the key for survival of our civilization the second issue you mentioned the loneliness mr president the loneliness is the consequence of the behavior of Europe in the past decades. Because the state was taking more and more roles and function on itself, uh, even those that would be natural for families. That is why somehow families didn't feel the necessity to keep these family links and relations and uh, uh, they, the state is responsible for taking care of the elderly in the thinking of people. Uh, it's kind of a justification that it's not the role of the families. So whichever activity of the third sector, NGOs who try to reinvent, recreate this former um, natural, um, environment is very much appreciated. When I came to this ministry, we started to support all possible organizations from the third sector, the, the NGOs in these activities. But I later found out that we basically don't support any of them, which would be created the principal functions of families. So today we are supporting both financially, both uh, cooperating via different bo bodies, uh, councils, advising to, to uh, the government, uh, and also directly so that these organizations may support families. And I really trust that we can reverse the, the trend that was here so far. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, you know, because uh, you know that we are uh, at your disposal, even uh, to find out uh, new argumentations in uh, supporting uh, your uh, policy, because uh, we, our function is not uh, uh, to be, to, to is, is just to stimulate, to try to, um, encourage also governments uh, that uh, this issue is not only a social issue, but is economical issue and is essential for
for the future of Europe. And we try also uh, on a scientific way to support uh, these uh, policies. So really, we are really at your uh, disposal uh, if, uh, if, uh, if you want, of course. But uh, we know as well that families uh, are also very important in your act, in your in, in your actual function in order to uh, to to welcome Ukrainian uh, families. Can you tell us uh, uh, words uh, a word about uh, this uh, very very tough situation? Uh Chcel by som vám povedať na úvod niekoľko čísel, aby si... In the beginning, I'd like to say a few figures so that you can imagine what the situation is. Until today, approximately 360,000 Ukrainians came to Slovakia. Of that, approximately 126,000 children. Of those 70,000 requested for um, temporary production, protection, of that, approximately 30,000 children. Immediately, once the war started in Ukraine, we taken a decision that those that will require temporary protection, we will allow parents to work immediately. Children will be taken in the schools and uh, kindergartens Im immediately. And whatever uh, accommodation and other assistance is needed will be provided to these uh, fleeing Ukrainians. Majority of those that were requested for temporary protection are women and children. And we are managing to include these people already, 5,000 already work uh, of them in Slovakia. Children are in kindergartens at schools. And uh, once uh, the situation in the western part of Ukraine has started to stabilize, uh, some of these families have already returned back home. But basically, everybody who requested for the stay in Slovakia for this temporary protection has been supported, uh, uh, supported in employment, education, psychological support. And we have a good experience with that because those Ukrainians that found the jobs in Slovakia, they basically meet the positions in which Slovak citizens didn't want to work anymore. 50% of those Ukrainians that found the jobs, they work in production, uh, in uh, factories, the, the potential of uh, filling in these jobs by Slovaks has been decreasing significantly. So basically, basically it's kind of a win-win situation. We are ready to help these Ukrainians, but uh, they also help us by working and later on by paying the taxes. Thank you very, thank you very much for, uh, for, uh, for for your activity, for your role, uh, because I know that it's not e it is not easy also to let everybody understand uh, that now we have to help people because uh, I mean uh, uh, Ukraine is your uh, is a country it is on the border with uh, Slovakia and you have to 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 play a role uh, uh, despite of. Uh, past problems and so on. And uh, I know very much that it's not easy to do that. Uh, and uh, you are doing because it's uh, your responsibility, your, your human uh, duty. And uh, so thank you very much because uh, we say all the time that these wars, uh, uh, the families do not want these wars. I mean, the mothers with child, don't uh, fight and 
And when we see this world, we see that uh, this is a question of, uh, of state, not a question of feminists and the feminists, but the feminists uh, are those uh, who, who uh, have uh, the, 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 the strongest uh, uh, and bad impact, uh, 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 receive the, 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 the bad consequences uh, from this world. So thank you very much. Because we, you know, we have we have as a FAPSE relations with Ukraine, so we have friends in Ukra in Ukraine who are uh, trying to do their best for their countries, and uh, thank you very much indeed. Will uh, I I I really thank you. So now we want to to finish this uh, very fruitful uh, uh, dialogue, uh, just uh, trying to be not provocative, but to, to, to try to see the family phenomenon in a different way. Because uh, uh, one of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of the, argument, the arguments that we use uh, promoting uh, the function of the family is that the family uh, uh, works as uh, an enterprise. And we say that the family is the, uh, is the first enterprise because we cannot have uh, 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 enterprise without organization, professionality, and uh, uh, economic management, because everybody uh, uh, who is part uh, member of family, so it means uh, almost everybody, knows very much that uh, you need organization in professionality and you need uh, also economic, uh, uh, economic management and budget. So how could uh, public policies uh, better recognize and award a world, young couples who decide to form a families to take on this uh, joyful responsibility. I think that a part of it uh, I have already mentioned and that is the massive increase of the tax bonus for a child. Because in Slovakia, it means significant motiv motivation for the activity of the families. Because who is not uh, uh, economically active will not be entitled to this tax bonus. So we are trying the the, the community, the families, that it is the right thing and appropriate thing that at least one person should work in the family. And however small the income is, it is worth it because it is compensated by the tax bonus. I very much appreciate, uh, Mr. President, your economic approach that you introduce into discussion about families. Because yes, you are right. If we counted the functions that the family does, um, I mean these economical functions within the state, well, then we would have to increase significantly the GDP in each country because mother has to take care of children, must um, wash their thing, uh, things, iron the clothing, must cook for the children, the relatives take care about the relatives and that is not included in the GDP of the state, but let us uh, consider the situation that the state would have to pay for it. Well, so it is a significant contribution of the families, not that we would want to forget about the love within families, but to mention also this economic function of the families and the state should take this into consideration in setting out the uh, policies. Dear Minister, thank you very much uh, for uh, your contribution. Uh, and um, I'm very sincere when I say that I would like to continue having uh, relations uh, and the exchange of ideas uh, uh, with you, 
because uh, you you have to feel the responsibility that now as to family policies we need more practice to be exported at european to european level because uh, we, we we must not neglect the family policies as a, a normal emergency social policies it's something different and we have to try also to let everybody understand that without a serious uh, uh, family policies we cannot manage uh, the future of our countries because uh, we, we we today we we, we didn't have uh, we do not have time to speak also about the population of the uh, rural areas but this is also a very crucial point so thank you very much Feel at uh, at uh, at my uh, uh, federation at your disposal, and uh, we hope also in uh, Slovakia to have alliance with universities, uh, with uh, professors, because uh, we are sure that we need to create a, a pro-family community which is able not too much to defend the families, but to propose the family as a, a resource for the common good. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, Kralniak, uh, Vincenzo Bassi, our president for this uh, FAFSA dialogue. Uh, I will be, uh, thank you for these very insightful uh, remarks from both of you, especially the, the good practices from uh, Slovakia when it comes to, to support to, to parents for, and mothers, especially. I very much, uh, I have to say, I appreciate the words about the how to tackle the pension pay gap of mothers and the support of the Slovak government of uh, the freedom of choice of mothers to either work at home or within the workplace with a job and the different support for children and the different bonuses that uh, to support um, a culture of welcoming life uh, in Europe. Um, I will uh, now close this FAFSE dialogue and I thank you uh, to all the participants uh, for today and I hope that we will uh, continue for a more uh, family-friendly Europe. Thank you very much.